Yo, what is going on, guys? Matthew V. Hainzer, aka The Clock Master. I'm here again with my friend. Dylan. Right now, we're going to be talking about some soundtrack stuff and how it has changed and a lot of things relating to superhero soundtracks and soundtracks in general with, you know, movies and everything going on with that. So, we started talking a little bit about this earlier yeah as to how much like memorable tunes and memorable songs and themes that really stuck with us um you know when you hear this when you hear christopher reeve superman you know it's superman yeah. when you hear um danny elfman's batman you know it's batman spider-man and so on and so forth but throughout the years you really started to realize that nowadays we don't have so much memorable theme songs the purpose of a soundtrack and we you know like so we were talking about the purpose of a soundtrack is to really enhance the ex the overall experience of an entire film and you know really add a lot of dynamics when it comes to the, whether it you know uh, a fight scene is going on or something is happening with you know a love scene or someone dies or something like that a lot of films majority of them sometimes don't even have that these days man I mean, literally, the ratio from of good soundtrack and good film to from before to now has dropped significantly. Uh, you really don't have films with both. You have films with good soundtracks and terrible imagery and a terrible story. Like, uh, for example, I guess Amazing Spider-Man Two. Oh yeah. yeah. Soundtrack is, I'd say, above decent. But at the same time, you watch the movie and it makes a lot of a less of an impact than it would if it were on. A better Spider-Man film. Yeah, that's true. Like if you just if you were to just listen to like just, just listen to the songs, just listen to the tracks, you just put it on your headphones. Um, you're just like, okay, I mean, it's not half bad. Like, okay, it's what it is. But like you're saying, you, depending you know with the movie and everything, especially what really helps to now you mentioned that is like, if a movie is not really written well or directed well, mm -hmm. and you have a really good soundtrack, sometimes that can maybe save the film. Sometimes, but other times it doesn't actually add anything i mean like batman v superman like yeah that film is eh, right? yeah yeah the soundtrack is fantastic but you watch the film and it's so much of a different experience than just listening purely to the music because, exactly i mean leading up to the film at least for me like i always go for the soundtrack i listened to the batman v superman soundtrack and i was hyped mm -hmm. for the film Watched the movie and there was maybe two scenes that grabbed me and those scenes didn't even really use the soundtrack to its advantage Yeah, so I mean not, when you're saying things like that I mean, I, I normally go with the same approach like trying to really like listen to um, The soundtrack try to get myself hyped see what's going on. Um, there's a personal pet like a pet peeve thing I got with when it comes to um, like soundtracks a specific composer Henry Jackman now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Henry Jackman's work. Um, he did he did films like X-Men First Class. Okay, yeah. Um, Apocalypse? Uh, I think he also did that. Um, he did a lot of those other movies. The thing about him is when you look at a specific theme, like Magneto's theme song, um, has a really, he, well, I'm getting more on the technical side of it now, but he uses more of a lot of digital sounds than the actual orchestra or an actual group, an actual band, full, opposed to someone like Hans Zimmer, who has a nice blend of both uh, digital sound and also organic natural sound. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Danny Elfman, he was all about that natural sound. You know, real instruments, real trumpets, real violins, real, real drums, people. real people. Um, so there's a big difference there. So when I listen to the X-Men First Class thing, it's like, I don't really get and I'm not saying a soundtrack needs to be all natural instruments. Mm -hmm. It could be digital. It's okay. It's the modern time we use that. But sometimes it doesn't impact me as much as if you do use, like, these are real people, people with real emotion that put into the film and it's written really well. And like I said, we were also talking about this too earlier, the type of writing that is in these films as far yeah. as going about writing these types of uh writing you know composing entire score for the film um composed like really catchy melodies that you remember for I mean, instance you know going back to the whole digital versus you know natural like instruments real, instruments real instruments yeah um another thing that really bugs me not necessarily in movies is uh if you watch the cw shows blake yeah. neely him and his team do the soundtracks for every single show and while they're the themes are great 
the film, the actual music that you hear in the episodes is so bog standard. It it, yeah. it doesn't leave any impact. Like if you had in a, like if you watched the season finale of um, let's say Arrow, right? Arrow, have yeah. you? I, I'm not stopped. You have to catch it. <laughs> I still gotta catch it. <laughs> I know you've been bugging me to watch it. I still have to catch it. All right, let me, let me change. Let me shift gears then. Let me shift gears. Um, How about the Flash season that's finale? That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. If you watch the Flash season finale. Um, the music in that is. It's not noticeable at all. It's it's almost invisible, and that's a problem that I think a lot of people have nowadays. Now I know um, Blake Neely and his team only use digital because of time constraints. They yes. have to shoot out every single episode, every week or every, every couple of weeks or whenever. Seriously, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. on top of that, they they have to deal with the whole money situation. Exactly. You can't Budget. Mm -hmm. Pay for a full orchestra for you know 23 episodes of yeah. a season. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, it, it really depends on who's doing it and what's on screen. And yeah. I mean, for instance, if you look, like we were talking about Logan. Yeah. Films like Logan, not so much a memorable soundtrack no. for the thing. It was, like you said, it, um, it more really added ground to just letting you know the type of tone this film was going to yeah, have. It's, Absence. It's Instead of enhancing your emotions by by playing the the music through, um, it more of gives you an atmosphere. It tells you what the emotion you're supposed to be feeling is, rather than exactly, yeah, making you feel the emotion. Exactly, yeah, like a more of like a force thing. Like, you know, we were doing examples. Hans Zimmer, slow building drums, yeah, coming up. So you're, it's like you're. Hey, I'm supposed to feel afraid, or I'm supposed to feel intimidated as to what's supposed to be happening now. And then there's that opposed, like you're saying, Logan, you naturally feel a certain way depending on what's going to happen, you know, Some, and sometimes it was like absence too. Like I've heard soundtracks where it's just literally just different sounds, like a, a three minute track, which is just different random notes, not in any specific really order or just, I've heard tracks like that. Um, now, before we like go off, we... And like some some honorable mentions, we wrote some them down. Honorable mentions as far as theme songs that are really, 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 really good, that are really memorable. You want to go ahead and just you know, because I remember the, the the first film. Yeah. Um, I mean, oh, I'm actually gonna switch it up. I think honestly, the the lowest example we can give right now is the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Okay. It yeah. is not the jukebox soundtrack, not the um the the songs that they took from other artists. I'm talking about the actual score of the film mm -hmm. and one thing i love about that soundtrack is it uses the jukebox soundtrack to it to, it, to its advantage when it um when it plays more fun moments and yeah. on the other hand of that you have the score which comes in at times like uh spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it like when ego is killed by peter yeah and i think that does it, the film does a really good job of balancing and not using one over the other because you can see like if you look at the track list for the Awesome Mix Volume 2, mm -hmm. there are a lot of songs in there that you don't hear in the movie. Yeah, that and is true. I'm, I'm glad that they do that because you can't have a 15, 14 song soundtrack yeah. and then <laughs> play it throughout the entire film and not utilize the score. Like There yeah. aren't enough songs that have the, the, uh, the weight to it mm -hmm. for your emotional moments. I mean, I will say... While I I don't necessarily really remember too much of that soundtrack, when you're talking about ego situation, um, when it whenever whatever instrumentation was going on there, it did actually make an impact because you were like, whoa, that's crazy. And the music really did add up, add that tension and that surprising moment. So it did, it, it really did its job there. I can agree with you with that part there. Um, but the whole juke jukebox thing, you know, that, you know, I <laughs> see that as well. While I like the whole jukebox, juke spot, jukebox approach, <laughs> jukebox, <laughs> it's definitely really good. Um, the other uh, one we had there is um, Man of Steel, First Flight. That track, in that scene, it makes the entire scene 10 times better. I mean, quite literally, listening to that track by itself is fantastic. Yes. And watching that scene by itself is all right. But you combine the two and it makes you feel emotions that you wouldn't have had there been no music or a different yeah. track in that. In you feel place. a lot of exhilaration, uh, happiness, um, 
all types of emotions you can't even explain. And um, I think Hans Zimmer, because I know I, I watch a lot of the behind the scenes stuff too, he had up to 10 or 12 different um, session drummers mm -hmm. recording the same exact instrumentation. Everything was the same. And I like that approach because it, it, it's such a weird thing. He uses so many different instruments that you don't even think about. Some instruments that no one even knows exist, especially in that song. Um, the heavy presence of the drums and the voices and the main melody was very definitive. It was so, so perfect. So, <laughs> so No Man's Land, that scene in the movie where she gets up that's what I'm going to do. And she gets up. <laughs> Diana, no. Diana, no. That's what I'm going to do. She gets up and she walks up and that glorious moment, we're never gonna start to talk about the color grading because it was so beautiful. Amazing, that's another conversation for another day. Um, but that scene there, Rupert Gregson Williams, who also did The Legend of Tarzan, so I'll go, I'll get, I said I'll get more into that in my, in my next review. He did a fantastic job with this score. Especially with this track, yeah, the be it really added to the most iconic scene, something that's so well, something that can be an iconic scene, something that can be a legendary scene, something that will go down in history as one of, I think, one of the greatest scenes in any superhero film. I really Seriously, do think so. Yeah. It's, it, this was like, you know, that Avengers, that Avengers moment when they're all in the circle. When they're all in the circle. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be. A moment like that. I think it's better than that. I personally think it's way better than that. There, There is, I mean, if you want to talk about soundtracks, like if you listen just purely based on the tracks they use in both of those scenes, like Wonder Woman has already won. Yes. Like there is, Of course, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> there's, I mean, no, there's no comparison in the two. I forgot who did, Um, I think... Alvin Silvestri. He did that. Um, didn't uh, didn't uh, um, Elfman do something with Avengers? I heard something about it. I, I forgot exactly. Um, Either way, though, the one of the most beautiful parts about the No Man's Land scene, in, in terms of the the track, is you hear the Wonder Woman theme, as in the theme from the exactly, movie. Exactly. Yes. All the way up until the point where she jumps through that window mm -hmm. with the shield and crashes through all the glass, lands, and then what kicks off from there is, of course, issue with you. Yeah. And. Mm -hmm. That's when you know. And that one fight. And then Rupert, he does a great job of really taking that song that Junkie XL, Tina, and Hans Zimmer created. And just adding his own twist to it. Having the main melody, the main lead melody in the front. And having other types of, I would I'd classify them as like sub-melodies. It's not a, a, a real musical term. Um, but underneath that, to really make it his own version of it. And what I liked about that. This track two is that it had like three ver like three parts. Yeah, that track was like a movie itself. Yeah, the beginning, <laughs> that memorable moment, creating that intensity, creating that superhero vibe. Her running through, da -da, going through, da -da, going through, da -da, <laughs> da -da, and she's going through, and she's fighting. And that shield comes out, and all the bullets. And then it goes to Is She With You. Ding, 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 ding. Amazing. And then after that one fight scene, she goes through the window again on the roof. The closing. That's like the climax now, the third I mean, act of that song. Literally. Oh, beautiful. The best part, though, about that whole three part thing is if you forget about the third part, what does that mean? Her stepping up into No Man's Land is yeah. the last time that she is Diana Prince. Of exactly. Atmosphere. You're right. When mm -hmm. she crashes through that window, she is. Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman and there's no going back. Mm -hmm. That's why you hear issue with you. Yep, that's the significance of that scene. It's incredible. It's reminding us who she is. It's and remind she is Wonder Woman at that point. You're absolutely right because we, like we said, we first heard that in Batman vs Superman. Once we heard that, we know that was her. She's here. Then we get that in that scene where she goes through the window. That's her. Wonder Woman. Wonder has Woman arrived. has arrived. There you go. That's that specific scene. So. Re, you know, I think that is a saving grace not only for um, Wonder Woman is not only a saving grace for like movies in general, but the soundtrack too is every track is memorable. Another thing we didn't have this on the list, but Ludendorff enough. I don't know if you heard that. No, I um, but it's Luden, Ludendorff's theme. It's a fair. It's a nice mix between Hans Zimmery darkness and some of that bright jungle vibe that we got from Legend of Tarzan. 
um, that Rupert also did mm -hmm. worked on, and it was a nice blend of the two. I think he really had a nice balance between darkness and some great light tones and nice melodies that are very memorable, things that are not yes. very rep repetitious, because we were talking about early, earlier, and we can go on and on about this, longer video, but Hans Zimmer is known for repetition, repetitious um, uh, uh, melodies or things that, it's just, it's just a sequence, things that's going off, and, and all, especially if you look at Time from Inception. I don't know if you ever heard that song. No, I haven't. But you have to listen to Time. It's literally the same progression over and over and over again, but with every, I would say after every four bars of it, so after the or after every eight, I would say, he adds a new layer of instruments, so he keeps layering the same spot. So Hans Zimmer works in layers. So what I love is that Rupert was able to capture that layers and also go with a free-forming style of creating things that are memorable and things and that's how we ended up with tracks like Amazon's the famous gear Ludendorff no yeah. man's land yeah. so you know, so th th those are great things you really dive into when it comes to these tracks and it has so many uh, ramification ramifications for the story I mean yeah quite literally like I haven't seen a soundtrack used to story development in any <laughs> um, I haven't seen a soundtrack used like this film has in, yeah. in terms of story development because I mean it really does instead of just enhancing your your emotions throughout the film it furthers the plot yeah absolutely absolutely there's nothing else like it it, it nothing is nothing better than a soundtrack that can really add to the story seriously it really makes or breaks a film. I mean, there are maybe two films other than this one that I, I can say successfully does that. Yeah. And I think those would be the original Star Wars. Star Wars, I was just about to say that, yep. I think honestly, like Blade Runner. That film- Oh yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Integrates so much of the scene into the music. It's- Yeah. Um, so basically when it comes down to it, what we're trying to say is, Super superhero films have become lackluster in terms of their soundtrack. We really need more films like Wonder Woman, like Man of Steel, that, that really utilize the music to push forward the yes. the plot. Yeah, like, and like we were saying, you know, the, some of the greatest films, as to use an example, um, some of the best writers out there are films like Star Wars, the main Star Wars theme, The Imperial March. Some of you guys may know it as Darth Vader's theme song. Um, Duel of the Fates with, you know, uh, uh, Darth Maul. Da, da, sha, sha, sha. That song. That's a great one. <laughs> that one's good. Great, you know, really old, a lot of these older films really do a good job of really, you know, being memorable tracks. So we really need a lot more movies like that. I mean, most modern times, like he said, Wonder Woman, Man of Steel had some really good, great tracks. The Dark Knight trilogy, Pirates of the Caribbean, Hans Zimmer. Really, really good soundtracks to really... Um, help the film and really progress the film going on forward. So we really need to see a lot more of that. And I yeah. think we're going in the right direction with Wonder Woman. Hopefully, Seriously. in the future, we'll get better, uh, better uh, music just like that. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry if it's a little bit long. I, uh, if it's a little bit long, if you watch all the way to the end, like I said, you were the MVP. Shout out to you if you watch all the way to the end. Um, also, make sure, like I said, uh, you know. Links in the description box below for social media and everything like that. Special thanks to Dylan. Um, if you guys haven't seen the Garden State Comic Fest video, please go and watch it. Link will be right up there. Please go check that video out. And I hope to see you. We might see you guys in another video, man. So, uh, Clockmaster and Dylan, we're out. <laughs> I gotta do it. <laughs>